So today's class is about our perceptions about things, our perception about fear, perception about everything in life. Now you have to understand, real jnani means an awakened one does not see life and death as a, as a way of departing. It's like uh, if a bulb went out on the city, it doesn't mean this, the network of who you are doesn't go off. So you still exist. And so the class will work on these matters that whatever the situation, whether it's a health condition you're going through or passing of a loved one or, or confronted by these issues within your own self, that how could, how can we um, move through the practice into this space of observation without having any perception? Because you're pointing the wind uh, to the moon, your finger does not mean the, the moon itself is the finger. A lot of people think that uh, the logical part of the human brain is what knows everything. But it is in its infancy state because we none of us other than an enlightened person have exercised the whole idea of awakening. So when you awaken that, that all and everything is also you because you're only having a perception out of a separation because you can navigate the conversation or a good and bad or right and wrong through this. So we are all hitting in these ends at, at this very moment, whether it's confronted by, by the way the world goes or whether the finance goes, whether it's health goes, whether it's relationship goes, so it is very important to have a time that when you are drawn into your consciousness at a deeper level, that you allow these sounds and vibrations of frequencies to move through without navigating into it too much. Uh, so saying that I'm going to start with some breathing techniques. So first breathing technique will be you gently breathe in with me and breathe out and very gently use that breath to come in and breathe out only like so you are not worried about keep doing it you're not worried about breath in coming into you you're just breathing out in and actually it is happening naturally it's awakening this system of all these neural paths and very gently getting this energy to move through all the hormones and bringing that balance that we can part of going to imbalance through our ideas about things. Now take a deep breath in and breath out gently. Now one more time breathing in and breathe out only. Breath in, hold the breath, and now the anus lock. And breath out. Now the next round, breathing in, breath out, breath in halfway, and out only. Breathing in, in a slot, breath out completely.
Now, very gently, we are coming into the Nadi Shuddhi or Nadi Shodhana to get these Nadis, these energy channels uh, to awaken. So take, uh, take the Vishnu Mudra and cover your right nostril and breathe out completely through the left nostril. Breathing in through the left nostril. Into the count of four. Hold the breath. Into the count of five. And breathe out longer as possible into the count of six. Breathing in through the right nostril into the count of four. Hold the breath into the count of five. Breathe out to the count of seven. Breathing into the count of four. Hold the breath into the count of six. Breathe out to the count of eight. Elongate the breath on the out. Breathing into the count of four. Hold the breath into the count of seven. Breathe out in the count of nine. Breathing into the count of four. Hold the breath into the count of seven. Breathe out into the count of ten. Breathing in through the right nostril. Hold the breath. Breathe out through the left. And very gently relax. Let the breath return back and just gently observe in the breath. Keep the body open. Keep the mind open. Just observing the heart rate is now very gently coming back. Now very gently, I'll move the camera towards Darren. Now very gently, arms raise onto the crown. Palms onto the Namaskar position. Chanting vibrations of the three ohms. Breathing in. Breathing in, relax the arms, arms raise onto the crown, sensing the space and the aura. Gently coming into that beam, awake into yourself, arms onto the Namaskar Mudra. And very gently chanting, of taking a breath in, home again. Relax the arms. Arms raised onto the crown. Arms onto the namaskar position. Take a deep breath in. And very gently breathing out into a oh. Now very gently relax the arms. Take a mudra in both hands and just listening and awake and mindful. And maintaining this sense of the new vibration without saying it's good or bad, without it says feeling great. Whatever is arising, 
one thing you know about life is about your experiences. Is that everything is uncertain. Anything can will be arise. The weather can arise, job can arise, relationship can arise, not to go looking for anything in particular, not to have hopes or expectations, not to have any demands or desires about how things should be, how even the practice should be, how even how you should be. Just observe. Pranayama, asana, da. Because when we have idea about things, we are bound to be disappointed. So you're just experiencing this conflict without conflicting. Everything that arises is unpredictable. Even your life in this time on a physical level, in a mind level, in a stable level, unstable level, control level, out of control level. Just observe. Not running from one to another. Now when you come to this realization, gently take a deep breath in, shrug the shoulders up, fill the head and massage the back of the skull. So then now open and close the mouth wider, wider, wider chin to the chest and collapse into a cat. Now very gently that anus lock, navel lock problem. Animal do this if you really see that um, if you have pets, their anus kind of goes on locking with their in-breath and out-breath is open. That's where most of the energy is actually sending through the spine. The more you recognize the nature of reality within, you will release those conditioned realms. Now take a deep breath in, tongue roll up onto the upper palate, really push onto the upper palate, energy gaze onto the third eye. Breath out, anus lock, navel lock. Now let just harmonize and navigate this energy to a frequency of peace. Nothing out of expectation. This nature is to change. Breathing in tongue roll up onto the upper palate energy gaze onto the third eye. Let's come into the wisdom aspect of the practice. Breath out, anus lock, navel lock, throat lock. Now breathing in, coming into a neutral space, you are now observing this body and the mind, but you are not the controller of this body and the mind. You have become mindfulness. You have become wakefulness. You are knowing of what is actually arising. So you have come into the Sati Sampradha. Now twist the spine to the right stomach holding. So each movement of the posture is in this wakeful. If you prefer to do the class without movement, please do so. Back into the center. Move the leg formation. Take a deep breath in and twist in the spine to the leg. Each moment. The satya is coming. Shoulders relax and chest open back into the center. Now take a deep breath in, very gently coming into the knees and coming into a pose of the cat. Palms under the armpit. Take a deep breath 
in tongue roll up onto the upper palate energy gaze onto the third eye. Bum pushed up. Breathe out, lock the anus, lock the navel, lock the throat. Now you're coming into the knowing aspect of that space. Breathe out, anus lock, navel lock, throat lock. Breathing in time, roll up onto the upper palate, energy gaze onto the third eye. Neutral spine. Rotate the hips wider. Now you are aware of fully knowing. Now you are accepting the change of things. But where you are awakening is stable, is that awareness. What a rotation to the other side. Very gently push the hips into the front, into the back, knees wide apart, palms facing up. Before entering into the class, you may have pondering or drowning through whatever you got caught up with. Up in the end in the changing unstable events. And you may have lost the practice, lost the dharma, lost the awakening, but now you have awakening. Now your awakening is not to control that it is going to be stable. Your awakening is that which knows that things come and go, things stable, unstable, things good and bad. Those are perception of you which is coming from the ego. But now you awaken to know itself. I'm swathing down, crawling and bringing the chest onto the front. Take a deep breath in, elbows onto the floor and coming into a gentle cobra. Soften the hips. Let the sole of the feet extend properly, open properly. Now, very gently, you are moving into a lightness of the posture. When you are savoring the posture, savoring the breath, and you're turning your attention to the awareness itself. Now, if you want to bring a past situation that you were disturbed now in this level of awakening, you will allow that whatever to arise and ceases as a part. But before you could not let it go, you could not, not talk about it, thought about it, thinking about it, or look into the right side. Back into the center or looking onto the left side. back into the center. Now sounds come and go, thoughts come and go, feelings come and go, emotions comes and go, but you're giving full attention into it. You're simply knowing the knowing. But know and the knower, we set up a perception of a subject. But simply to know the knowing, this is all perceived awareness. Now you come into the inquiry. How can we know awareness when we simply are awareness? Not through the ego, but by the realization. You 
because you want the eyes to look at it. You want to feel it. You want to hold it. You want to know. This is ego coming back. You want to achieve something. Relax the third eye, elbows pointing out. Soften the hips. Arms stretch into the back. Take a gentle breath and holding onto the ankle. Push the heels away from you and take a deep breath in and coming up. Use very gently the thumb of, to create acupressure pressure on the feet. Bring the feet closer to the buttocks and relax and let go. Turn the head totally onto the right side and sink the shoulder blades a little bit more. Switch the arms a bit more into the side, back into the center onto the other side. Yeah. Back into the center. Now, if you can, arms onto the chest level, breathing into an up face and elevate the space of the physical arc, but you're elevating to know the full awareness and the stable unchanging dharma. Heart of awareness. Breathe out towards the down face. Take time to adjust your down face. Take time to blossoming into the down face. Take time to open into that space very gently to the energy and the frequency of it. Take a deep breath in, left leg up into the back. Rotate the foot, left knee to the left chest. Breathe out. Breathing in, stretch back. Left knee to the left elbow. Breathe out. Stretch back. Left knee to the right elbow. Breathe out. Stretch back. Left foot into the front. Modify the practice where your body is at this moment. Arms stretch into the back. Arms raise onto the crown. Now gentle six deep cycles of breath on the Ujjayi Panya. So it's like you're making a subtle sound like your throat is breathing from a straw. In breath and out breath making a slight vibration. Activating that awareness in your throat, activating the throat chakra, balancing those hormones regulated by the ayurveda. Take a deep breath in, opening up onto the Virabhadrasana. Now you don't see a difference in anything. Your heart of awareness and all of your heart of awareness is the same. This is a universal knowing, not just one person's knowing. It is larger than that, which does not start, which does not stop, which does not create or disruption. There is a constant flow of this knowing. Not the manifestation of the universe I'm talking about. When you come into that gentle arch, constant flow of the breath, constant monitoring of the awareness, constantly, uh, not the manifestation of this body and the mind. Back into the center, elbow onto the knee. Right arm, very gently reaching out. Coming into that constant presence, right reaching into the front, right reaching on the flow, left arm reaching up to the ceiling, open up that rib cage, constant presence, constantly opening up the pressure, left reaching into the back, touch the floor, drop the back knee onto the floor, holding on the front knee. Arms stretch onto the side. 
Garuda Asana right on the top. Now, your choice of the practice, not so much as recognizing. When you're not in the practice, you get caught up in the unstable things, conditioned things. You know the outcome of this. Even if you didn't know at that time. Outcome is always stressful to control a future control, a situation. There's a different strength in facing whatever it is. When you come into this realization, stroke your third eye to the crown, spread the wings wider, and touch the floor. Because your realization and release is there's nothing that you can control. Nothing that you can hold. Temporary, yes, but not permanently. Flat. Strong on the pelvic floor. Drop the knees, stretch the spine on the outbreak. Breathing in, crawling and bringing the chest into the front. Drop the belly, soften the hips, breathing in into an up face. Breathing out towards the down face. Let the body to become that space that you are very gently moving into. Right leg up, rotation to the right foot, right knee to the right chest, breathe out, stretch back. Right knee onto the right elbow, stretch back, right knee to the left elbow, stretch back, right foot into the front, arm stretch into the back, arm stretch onto the crown. When you come into this realization of constant state of flux and flow, when you realize that you do not need to grasp or cling to them, Ujjayi Pranayama, six deep cycles of breath. Let the breath breathing into a straw in the throat. So it's making a, a gentle vibration of a sound. And the result of this is the balance of the thyroid. On a physical level. But it's also this observation. Bringing you, returning back to your true nature. the truth of the dharma, where suddenly, not because your posture is great, not because of your breathing is great, your realization make you a more solid ground, unshakable. When you come into that place, opening up into the Virabhadrasana, taking a mudra to permeate the unshakable, imputable mudra that nothing can move you. When I say move, almost it is nothing can disturb you. Gentle arch back into the center, elbow onto the knee. Left arm reaching up to the ceiling. Left arm gently on a deep breath out, reaching into the front, touch the floor. Breathing in, right arm reaching up to the ceiling, into the back, very gently touch the floor. Drop the knee. Hold this unshakable space of aliveness. It is not dead because it is not controlled. Anything controlled is dead. Now very gently spread the wings wider. Left arm onto the top. Holding that. 
both Gardasana. The sense of unshakable nature. It's very gentle, subtle. But the subtleness is nothing to look in for, nothing to achieve, nothing to gain, nothing to see, nothing lacking, nothing to buy, nothing to glorify, nothing to talk about. Nothing anyone can give you. Not even your teacher. No guru, no teacher, no partner. Merely a point. Ultimately, no one can give it to you. How can anyone give it to you what you already is? You just forget about it sometimes. When you come into this realization, stroke the third eye and the crown and spread the wings. Like the great phoenix coming out of the ashes into a plank, strung on the pelvic floor, drop the knees and shift the spine. A place of realization, place beyond the education. A place that you have discovered your own world. When you don't discover, you keep on begging it from others, begging it from the country, begging it from the parents, begging from the relationship, begging from So moment when you come into this unstable ground, begging for respect, as soon as you realize this dharma, as soon as you discover it, when you are holding the koino, priceless diamond ever found. Can you fully recognize that right now? Have you made that discovery in this very moment? So this is like a cobra habit, knowing it's gin. It's like you have this, but you throw away when you go back on your habitual story, habitual drama and dharma is lost drama comes habitually i'm facing down crawling and bringing the chest into the front breathing in into a up face breathe out towards the down face lift up onto the toes push down to the heels Lift up onto the toes, push down to the knees. Gently feet apart, bending the knees. Very gently walk those palms towards you. Feet back, feet apart. Holding onto the back of the neck, releasing the tension. Releasing the tension and recognizing what, when you are not, Realizing is the most valuable thing within you. You carry so many things that are perception of success. Perception. People get into a relationship just to identify it as a as an achievement. Because they can't have the relationship within themselves. Now you're really the practice is just simple but constantly recognized. Your inheritance, not what your mother and father is going to leave it to you. The stable, unshakable inheritance. This awareness of presence. 
So the head side to side, release the tension, bend the knees, wake up the spine very gently. Head down very gently, shoulders roll back. Now let the feet clear this inheritance that was always there. Let these ankles feed this and it's not shackling you anymore. Just observe that your shackles of conditions are dissolving. Knees tension is dissolving. Hip tension is dissolving. Melting like butter. Heart tension is dissolving. Shoulders and elbows and handcuffs are removed that you no longer dissolve. Back of the head, jaws, eyes of the head. You're awakening into a priceless dharma. A deathless dharma, a deathless mind. Not the brain, not the fleeting conscious, but the mind which is formless, substanceless, impersonal, all pervading, all knowing, but there are mere words. So don't attach to them. Because the word is created to get attachment, not a reality. Now very gently, holding onto the left ankle, right arm reaching up, very gently from that sable face, just holding this posture. You can slightly bend your knees if you are finding balancing. And very gently bring that left knee to the chest. Completely breathe out and very gently rotate the foot and let go. Try to find that extension of that leg, flow of that leg. Now let's move to the other side with your mind. Holding on to the right hand foot. Stretch the left arm up with the mudra. What you're doing is you're shedding things out of the pose. You're shedding away from concepts, perception. You're no longer not even conceptualize this posture, what it does and what it does not do. The real reality of this posture is beyond concepts. So you're guiding into that stable dharma. Knee to the chest. Rotate the foot. Let go. Arms raise onto the crown. Lift up onto the toes. Engage the pelvis to low. But outspread the wings wider and relax the heel. Now very gently feet apart, bend the knees in deeper. Use this posture as a posture of releasing things. Now remember, if you want to achieve something, this posture, that means suddenly your ego is coming back to claim something that it has not even done. If you wanted to pop this posture too much, be observe of the pride. If you're letting go and making the posture a bit more sluggish, then attain it a little, achieve a little bit more. That's something that is to be attained. I mean, the ego cannot achieve anything in this realm. It does not exist. The realm that you are in Ego cannot achieve anything because there's nothing to attain in this realm. There's nothing to attain has the potency of truth to it. 
bring the bam onto the flow. Bring the knees to the chest once you bump. Arms raise onto the crown, feet stretch up, breathing in. Breathe out. Breathing in. Breathe out. Breathing in. Breathe out. Breathing in. Chin slightly up. Breath out. Breathing in. Breath out. Knees to the chest. Sole of the feet together. Knees wide apart. Drop the heels. Onto the floor. Just give a massage to the feet and bring that acupressure immense into that pervading place of your realization. Fully encompassing that awareness, knowing that there is nothing to attain, but everything drops, releases. Now under the ankle, locking onto the toes and walk those bumps back, coming into that kumarasana, the unchanging reality. So there is nothing to attain now from this moment. Everything is dropping. Everything is releasing. You take the samadhi in this state of unchanging reality. I would like to continue just moving to this space. That unshakable space. Pattern. Now very gently waking up the spine. Shoulders relax and just open. Stretch the legs into the front. Release any further tension. Remove the static from this posture. Shake, shake, shake. Now very gently lying down on the floor. Bring the feet close with the buttocks. Tuck the tailbone under, very gently lifting up one vertebra at a time. You have become the reality of that vast eye. The abounded space of consciousness. Take a deep breath in, gently coming down one vertebra at a time. Now, tuck the tailbone under, take a deep breath in, arms raised up to the ceiling, back to the crown, onto the back. When you're lifting up the spine, stretch, 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 stretch. Push the bum up a little bit more. Stop on the feet, no clinging, coming down one vertebra at a time. Now bring the knees to the chest to complete. Breathe out and rock the spine. There's a rock, but there is no rocking. There's a silence, but it is not without the sound. Now coming into that seating posture and push the spine to the right. Back to the center, change the leg formation, twisting the spine to the other side. Back into the center. Now very gently dropping further into the space of that silence. You're not avoiding the universal space. You're dawning into the wake up of a lot of vibrations. But the state, the word is cease and silence prevails. Thinking is no longer a taste that you run after. It's a 
you have lost the flavor of it. You you just compassionately look at it. Oh, foolish mind! Who is suffering due to the desire for the petty pleasures of? Oh, foolish thought. You remain quiet without Oh, foolish body. You are now in the state of bliss. Surely transcending the Transcending everything, nothing can confront and overcome. Now you know this self-awareness is real. You are rooted in When you are rooted in the truth, what happens to the mind movement? It only stays there if you're interested. If you're not interested in it, it gradually subsides. Now it's like a dawn of a sun. The silence reveals itself. You're refraining from looking out because you love the bliss of this awakened stage. You're not noting outward objects anymore. This penetrate through your being. End of pain rises the bliss of peace. Result is your personality is not there. Your story is no longer there. Your past and future is not there. It's a egoless awareness. No longer that verbal wisdom is shouting. No longer you have to tell your achievements. You have become free from concepts. Which are afflicting thoughts. Completely vanishing, transcending. If you want to know the look of God, then you are supremely fulfilling the vision of God. Now you are free like water and wind. No one can hold you. Your presence will be quenched to the thirst. A breeze for the tiredness which you are. This consciousness of the heart 
the healing begins with the divine truth is revealing. Gradually you come into this realization. Come very gently raised back to the crown, cleansing the space, creating that holy vibration. There is no trace of grease or disconnect or anything to achieve. We're gently bringing those palms into the crown. Third eye. There is no one to know. Throat chakra. No one to have a conversation. Heart, there is no state of doubt it's arising from this heart. Solar plexus, true self, navel, space is remaining without affirmations, validation into the Mula Chakra. Emails in the depth of the being. The mind have come into its end. Which concern about other things, other people, other ideas. Now you can stay in this space without any thought. I'm straight onto the crown with the cleansing of that over of the highness that thoughts are burned. Remaining is quiet is what is called wisdom inside. Coming into the pranam of your own wealth, your own inheritance only can be seen when you remain quiet is to resolve the mind. Namaste. It's all that uh, We, uh, we got you to come into your origin. Be gentle with this space of your origin because this is who you are really. And you're with your inheritance. It's like a beggar does not know the treasure under his fire. So mind keep on begging for this, begging for this from others. In a relationship, it begs. It's it's the success. It's begs. It's uh, in health. It's big. But this is beyond that that space. So you have to gently, when you recognize this space, go into that space of silence and continue. That space. It does not ask you not to do work, not to allow noise, because there's nothing about the noise and silence here. And this is when you dawn into the morning of the sun. This all the animals, birds, trees, all make a lot of sounds. That's awakening place. And you get more into that space because you allow that silence within yourself. So your mind chatter is not no longer heavier and louder and lightning constantly. So uh, the dog who lives in the goldsmith banging on the thing will never hear a lightning. 
because it's already in that space of that. Thoughts can be like that. So, uh, please, please take care of your space of healing. I'm not personally, but allowing that space. Rebecca Das and your beautiful son, thank you for the class. Dr. Michelle, thank you for everything. And Maria Ann said, enjoy the rest of the day. You have come into your birthplace because you are by for now. <laughs>